It was late morning of day two of our trip, and we were ambling down the river under a light rain. The miles were ticking by, and the scenery was gorgeous. The endless rock bluffs, rolling hills, and emerald water were the perfect setting for a nice day of paddling. For me, day two is when the trip really begins. You start to establish the rhythm of riding the river and sleeping on the bank. The rest of the world and its cares seem to slip away. And whether you're pushing to make miles or just enjoying a more relaxed pace, everything boils down to waking up, drifting down a river, and searching for your next temporary home. We were coming into another town, and we were hoping the store would be open. It's always nice to get out of the boats and get a little snack and a cold drink. There's a lot more current there than it looks. There's a lot more current than it looks. All right, we're here at Round Springs. It's supposed to be a store. Uh, got a big old bridge here. This is the upper landing. One of the few road crossings we've seen. So we're gonna wait up here, see if they got a store open, and this time maybe there'll be something to buy inside. We were so sorely disappointed at the last store. We're hoping. That looks really closed. They have less than the other store. completely out. We can't even rob the place and get a drink, so now we're cruising over here to the bathrooms if they're open yeah that's where we're heading oh well that's the end of the tour over two. <laughs> two guys over two um so there's round spring campgrounds brenda's guaranteeing it's open and they've got sodas with our name on it the oh there's no store i don't is there a store no oh, this is just getting worse and worse all right on to round springs campground one downside to coming in the off season is that the businesses are not open and running at full capacity. We don't really need the stores or what's inside, but we found that some of our best memories are meeting the people in the little places along the river. It kind of adds to the character of a run, and it's just something we enjoy doing. But now that we're over two, we're heading for the lower landing at Round Springs. But there's supposed to be a beach just ahead, and we were ready for lunch.
So it looks like we go up here and sit at a picnic table. They probably have a trash can. That's a good one. But that's a that might that's lunch spot right there, that boys and girls. That looks nice. So we're just eating lunch, minding our business, and we notice that there's crows landing. Actually, on now they're on Brian's boat. They were on Austin's boat. Mm. That's your silver dry bag or deck bag. We don't know what the crows are after, but they're they're after something. This should be interesting. After eating a quick lunch and running off some pesky crows, it was time to slip back into the boats and slide off down this beautiful river. I used to always talk to my grandfather about my adventures, and he would always ask me the same question. What was it like? And I'm not really sure he wanted to know or if he just wanted to hear me talk about it. When you're talking about a complete adventure, or a river, or a life, it's hard to explain what it was like because each moment could be so different. And although my mom's dad is no longer around, the question still pops in my mind. What is this river like? And I can imagine myself telling him the story of the emerald green water and how the sun came out that day after lunch. And it was perfect. When I was a young man, he used to tell me all his favorite stories. Whether it was hooking himself with a fishing lure, or getting bit by the neighbor's monkey, or maybe being lost on a lake in the fog at night and not knowing where the dam was, or falling out of his car while trying to impress some girls. He had a way of telling you the story that made you feel like you were there. Later, when he was older, he would listen to my stories. And what I realized is that he had a way of listening to your story that would almost make it feel like he was there with you all along. And one thing I always remembered is that every story was something bad that happened to him. And we're all looking for our trips and endeavors to go just like we planned. But when they don't, you just have to accept that you're living in a good story and make the most of it. And that lesson that Granddaddy Bilisali taught me as a young man, just by telling me stories and listening to mine, would help out a lot on this trip. 
But at the moment, everything was going according to plan. The sun was out, the water was perfect, and you couldn't ask for better company. So we are coming into what we believe is camp here. We've run about 19, uh, maybe 19 and a half miles on the day. The weather has turned, kind of socked in and been drizzling now for about an hour or so, maybe a little longer. It's chilling off a little bit. It's really not bad, but just a little bit chilly. Been a good day. What time is it? Uh, like a little after four. A little after four, so yeah, it's a good day on the water. I'm trying to record and Kevin keeps interrupting me. Did you want to say something on the camera? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a beat down school kid. Like... <laughs> We've been having fun today. Everyone's ribbing everybody, keeping everybody honest, but um yeah. I'm not even really hungry because I ate pretty big lunch and then I ate the pickles. Brenda's got me on pickles. They're a little bag of pickle slices. You get them at Walmart. Um, I got the trash in here somewhere. It's inside the cockpit. I'm going to have those on every trip. It's like a little burst of flavor and freshness. It was good. Dirt Dauber really doesn't share any secrets with me, so I don't know if he doesn't like me or if he's just trying to keep things to himself, but I know he's got some secrets. With all his years of outdoor experience, and he's just... What do you say, Dirt Dauber? I'll talk about that later. Oh yeah, so if anyone's out there that has stories on dirt dauber, oh. we need the dirt. Call me. I need dirt dauber dirt.
All right, I had some uh, batteries dying and everything right when we arrived at camp, but we found a uh, found it to be perfect. Brian and the gang have used this spot before, and it is an amazing hammock spot. I mean, there's just hammock trees for days. Uh, the access is pretty easy. Not a big hill to climb or anything, and as you can see, we got things spread out everywhere. That's like the Millennium Falcon right there. If a high wind storm kicks up, Brian is in trouble. But uh, as always, Austin Wallace is uh, like a pro. As you see, he's got his suit all uh, puffed up, warming up, getting everything uh, feeling good. How was your day? It was fantastic. Fantastic. We <clears throat> had fun with a bunch of laughs. Even the rain was fantastic. Even the rain was good. It kind of brought a different, you know, it's nice to have a little change up here and there. Brian Dillard is the fire master. And uh, he's got another good one, so... I'm gonna get some dinner ready. I'm gonna go over there, sit by the fire. Oh no, it's raining. I may sit under a tarp and eat dinner. It's not gonna rain. It's not gonna rain? Not gonna rain. <laughs> Rain's, over. <laughs> Rain's over, sure. Well, uh, we'll go with what he said and hope he's right. A quick little thing I did, uh, just got a little hangout tarp in case, in case it really starts raining and we wanna not just recline or retire to our hammocks for the night. I got a spot where we can all kind of hang out under there with chairs or whatnot. And I use my paddles as the uh, spacers pull out the uh, headroom and stuff. On my place tonight, this is the configuration I'm using. Did not do the super shelter because I wanted to have my kayak under here with me uh, just for ease of packing up and whatnot. So still a 16, but not winter configuration. Just kind of A-frame, stake to the ground. And it'll do fine. It's not super cold, so I don't need to kill all the airflow. Brian is freezing. <laughs> and uh, that's camp tonight. We're here by the fire. I got the jet boil running. It's a pretty fire. Close enough that I can feel it, but I'm not playing the chicken from the smoke. Like this guy. Like Austin. <laughs> How's it down there? Great. Wouldn't it be terrible if you got an ember on your dry suit and you had a damp suit? All right. <laughs> I'm doing chicken and dumplings tonight. Uh, by the way, this table is still amazing. Matt Martinson gave uh, Brian and I and Kevin one, and they are awesome. If you want one, the link in the description. It's just a cheap thing off Amazon, but it's amazing. I use it all the time now. It's on all the trips doesn't weigh anything it just kind of keeps you off the ground a little more civilized another perfect day on the river even the rain was good great camp it's good stuff we spent the next few hours by the campfire running in and out from under tarps because of rain and then we settled down to sleep under the pitter patter of steady rain that lasted through the night Morning, Brian. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Did you stay dry last night? Well, in between the raindrops falling in the face. You know? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see at home, but there's a dark shadow line right here. It goes around me. And then there's the light color below. Well, that's, um, I put my UGQ Winter Dream over my Noah's Tarp 16 because for the first time in like 10 years since I've used the Noah's Tarp started having water come through the tarp mine's brand new and, and Brian's is brand new and it happened so my tarp's too old to keep water out and uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the brand new one but that's disappointing not what we're looking for. And uh, I've slept in mine hundreds and hundreds of nights and never been wet. But uh, it was definitely coming through last night. And the rain wasn't that hard. It wasn't like super driving rainstorm, which I've been in before and never had an issue. But in um, any case, the UGQ Winter Dream does not leak. And uh, it solved it. 
I'll put that over there. Of course, there's no water coming through. So moving forward, we're going to have to figure out either like sealing the other tarp with some camp dry or something. Or something. Because Brian doesn't like water dripping in his face when he's sleeping. <laughs> Look at that nice haircut, man. You're looking sharp. You, you gotta get camera ready, right? Camera ready. <laughs> it basically rained all night. Oh, yeah. There's a couple pauses. Um, about 4.45 it was not raining and I had to use the restroom. So when I got out, I also checked the river to make sure it wasn't getting a little bit out of control. Because I can hear rapid now that I couldn't hear yesterday. But, uh... It, it looked like it hadn't come up. There's a stick in the water at the water's edge, and it was basically at the same spot. So the river really hasn't moved. And I don't know this river, but there was a lot of rain that came down last night for hours. So we may get some river level increase during the day today, is what I'm kind of anticipating. But I don't know because we'll be moving faster than the water, and maybe we'll outrun it. Who knows? But again, I'm warm. I'm in my UGQ quilts. The winter dream saved the day. I'm too lazy to get out of bed again. The quilts are too nice. I'm too warm, too comfortable, too dry. I feel like uh, I want to get up and start packing. But at the same time, I just just doesn't doesn't feel like I want to get up and start packing. Oh dear God. Brian looks like a neon-colored Star Wars character this morning. You sleep with that thing, don't you? <laughs> but my, my friend Brian is asleep, minding his own business, and this rude intruder lands on his tarp <laughs> and uh, broke a guy line. But I mean, that's like that's a testament. To that's a testament right to the Noah's tarp. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So crazy stuff. Yeah, it's man. not raining. It's kind of dripping. The water level is still about the same, so really hasn't changed much. So we got that going for us. You can see my hot mess here. Double tarp, look like a a homeless person. No offense if you're out there homeless. But uh, yeah, I'll have to coat my Kelty or something here moving forward. And then tomorrow or tonight, I'll be using the winter drain for sure. How you doing? Down there, Austin. Never better. Never better. Also, I've discovered a, a negative to my setup is that from the tree to the tree, there's a hump of dirt. And it makes it real short in there, and it's kind of been annoying me. Kevin over there has a, a depression between his trees, so he gets a couple extra inches. And, uh, yeah, and uh, he's looking good in his ninja suit, man. Looking sharp. It's okay for men to wear tights, right? <laughs> I was getting dressed and Brian Dillard announced the presence of the sun and if you can see back there take it in folks we may not see it again <laughs> would you rather me say I couldn't imagine it ever raining that much again this trip what do we got going on here Brian this. Oh my God. Look at this. I don't really say they've hatched out of his dry suit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. For an arachnophobic. Spiders everywhere. Uh, That's awesome. They're brown recluses oh too. They God. are not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best trip ever. We got bears under tarps. We got oh nests of spiders. Oh. I'm sure you'll get all of them out, Brian. Don't worry about oh, it. <laughs> They are everywhere. Son That's of a funny. Boy. You're going to feel them crawling you know inside your suit Brian? while you're in the boat today. Look yeah. at the ground. Oh, this is great. All that's coming out of this dress. In what world does that happen? In your world, I guess. Oh, my God. Of all things, why couldn't it have been a snake? Wait a minute. One of you all did this. Huh? Would we put a nest of spiders Which in your dress? Which one of you is the spider wrangler? Kevin! Kevin! <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> it's always the quiet one, guys. It is, it is. Dirt Where is Dirt Dauber? So we got John and Brenda here are, are inside outing the dry suit to try to get all the spiders out the best they can. Um, this is awesome. 
Apparently, Brian, talk to me, Brian. Spiders are your thing? Yeah, well, no, they're not my thing. They're, they're the polar opposite of a thing. Kevin has snakes, Brian has you know, spiders. I can handle one, two, you know, I can negotiate that, but a hundred in one, you know, convenience. It's like they were having a town council. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how, they, they all one by one had to single file scale the ridge line to get No, that, the suit. it's probably like a, yeah, a probably mother tarantula was crawling there and all the babies jumped off at the same time. Oh, thanks. That, well, where's the mother? Probably in your boots. Probably. <laughs> they're coming back. They're <laughs> they're going Look, they're on the ground. They're, they're everywhere. All over the place. Everywhere. What is that? That is a tarantula. Oh, Those man. are tarantulas. That's highly possible. <laughs> uh, have you tried to dump your boot up? Yeah, how do you you like might I've been wearing you, them, bro. so. Do what? I said, how do you like that laugh you now, might... Brian? <laughs> Doesn't feel oh. so good on the other side, does it? <laughs> Sinister. <laughs> I love kayak camping, but days like this just make it all the better. We're not laughing at you, Brian. We're laughing with you. You're just not laughing yet. <laughs> We struck off under the promise of another new day. I remarked about how the air and the temperature was just like Alaska. All we were missing was the majestic mountains. Day three on a trip is probably the best. Day one, you're just getting started. Day two, you slip into the rhythm. And day three, there's nothing else. You know the river now and you can't wait to see what's around the next bend. But day three can also be the hardest day. For those not used to sitting in a kayak for hours on end, days on end, day three is where that shows up. But neither crew would have any issues on that front. However, day three is also the day when you really find out if your gear is working. Enough days of rain and it doesn't matter what you wear, if it's not a dry suit, you're not going to be dry. Just ahead, I spot a potentially hazardous site with a few root balls stuck in the main current. I prepare to catch an eddy to be around to make sure no one needs help. Right behind me here is twin rock and uh, some rocks have calved off the, the big rock wall there. Pretty cool. Uh, and the, uh, the smagicino is good this morning. A little nip in the air. Probably could use one more layer under the uh, dry suit. 
but it's all good. Oh, look at that. Got to get in the drips of that rock wall. For sure. Up ahead is another rock wall with a big overhang. Yeah, there's something in there running. So we're here on the current river and Austin is feeling an adventure Steve Wu. And the time is right, he said. No, I said the time is not right. The time is not right, which means it's right because we need some adventure Steve. Shane and Steve, I think you could probably handle this river. You ought to try it, but uh, let me get close to Austin and we'll together give an adventure Steve Wu. Austin has that look uh, decidedly of about to do something he really doesn't want to do. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, wait a minute. Let's get let's get tight. Let's have the collision first. Yes. All right. Adventure Steve Wu on the count of three. Right ready? One, two, three. Woo! You did a great job. <laughs> I feel played. <laughs> That's all I got. Woo! Oh, did you hear that? Paddles. He's got his knee. Missouri will never be the same. And so our journey continued on a nice, relaxed and overcast day. It was hard to explain exactly what this day was like. There was a little less conversation between paddlers. I think not due to the fact that we are irritated or tired of each other, but more so friendships had developed and meaningless idle conversation wasn't needed to fill the void. Yeah. <laughs> the scenery was fantastic and once again, we had the whole place to ourselves. And as it normally happens on day three, our crew and our journey had both come into their own. Quite simply, we all got lost in the current river expedition.
by late morning, we find ourselves here at the confluence of the Jack Forks River and the current. The Jack's Fork is another beautiful river I've only heard of, but want to explore in the near future. This is also Anita's location, the outfitter that provided us the shuttle. But as fate would have it, her store wasn't open yet either. So onward we paddled, looking for a dry place to eat some lunch. Let's break our speed record. Maximum speed. Oh, I'm speaking already. I achieved 11.4 miles an hour on the first run. On the second run here, everyone joined in. But Dirt Dobber got out of control and went broadside in front of Kevin. I wish I had caught the rest on camera. Dirt Dobber almost flipped and we didn't stop laughing for 15 minutes. So we are passing through the area of eminence and uh, we got some rain, really windy. The weather's chilling off a little bit. Uh, we did hit 11.4 miles an hour max speed back there, having a little fun. Um, the rapids have kind of, the river's wider and a little less involved. Might be a good way to say it. But the views are grander. But yeah, it's about uh, 12 o'clock, so we'll be looking for a place for lunch here soon. I thought about maybe starting a fire and kind of hanging out, but now it's raining, so maybe, maybe not. Maybe just keep pushing. These gravel bars are awesome. We just keep rolling through gravel bars. This one's pretty big. Kind of a neat look. Never really paddled through a river with this kind of exact geology. Just this brown gravel everywhere. Swirly whirly. Oh, yeah. So it is uh, a bridge here, and I believe 
we may be taking lunch here. I'm not 100% sure. But it sounds like a good idea. Double Z, double Y, double X. Some kind of name of some bridge. Doesn't really matter. But it's not raining under the bridge. Austin Wallace. How you feeling, brother? I could not be any better. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. River is up a little bit from the rain. And she's moving. You can see that out there. She's coming on down the river. Good current. You see the crew? Staying dry. They're filling the bellies. Trying to stay warm. Cold front's moving in, so the temperature's dropping. Thank you, sir. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not very good at saying that. Oh, Russell Thank Stover. You, That's River King approved. Awesome. <laughs> So under a steady rain and with full bellies, we shoved off downriver. Next up on the list of things to see was Blue Springs. But first, this is what happens when you try to eddy a 14 and a half foot boat behind a three foot rock. <laughs> so we paddled up the mouth of Blue Springs till we could park our boats on the side and follow a trail up to the mouth. It was a little bit of work, but well worth the reward. This was indeed a special place. Woo we got the Colonel Cam going. All right, we have bushwhacked our way to the Blue Springs Trail. Man, look at that spring. That is insane, folks. It's like a it's like a gem colored turquoise. What do you think, Austin? That's pretty amazing, isn't it? That is blue. Blue springs. All right, we are back to the boats. And uh, I'm going to pull up just right up here and uh, peel out and make this uh, little run out. I thought about running all the way to the top, but the whole crew's waiting in the rain. That would take me at least 30 minutes to do, so we'll skip it this time. There's plenty of white water to be had later on another trip. Look at him! Get it, Austin! The rain had settled in, and likewise, we had settled in to a pleasant afternoon of paddling. Feeling adventurous, Austin and I decided to take the left side of this island for the road less traveled. And as we were slipping around the point of the island, the crew let us know the campsite was in half a mile. And little did we know, the island lasted a little more than half a mile.
this thing hey what we need to do is come up the edge as far as we can go and then set a ferry course you'll go straight to John right. just manage your angle keep it mostly vertical don't get too sideways and then kind of flirt with getting that perfect angle it'll take you across but go as far up before you cut over as you can <sighs> that's a great start <laughs> For the best part of the day. Just pull right up through that eddy line the best you can. Right about the end of that pool, just start preparing. That's good. Yep, just keep, keep your angle and you're fine. Just stay down. That would help you. <laughs> Austin and I doing the mad ferry across the river. You can relax a little pace. You're doing plenty well. Yes, sir. That's all that white water training, baby. We were contemplating how bad we wanted to camp with you guys, depending on where we came out. <laughs>
So we drug our boats up and began to set up camp on the flat here at Indian Creek. In the back of my mind was the fact that it had been raining solid for two days and sprinkling before that, and raining for a few days before we got here. But the river did not yet seem to be affected. I couldn't make it out. I took note of the high ground on the other side of our tarps and thought that would be a good escape if this gets a little too wet. This will become very important in the next few hours. It's raining, it's been raining all day, it rained all night. It rained most of yesterday, but we're still living good. Now let me run around and show you the camp. Start here with uh, the good Sir Austin Wallace. What up? What up? Living an organized, Simple and well-ordained life. And apparently inferior. Inferior. I was thinking, man, you look so organized and it's all so... Compact. Yes, and... and we'll go with that. That's yes. good, at least. I mean, if you're going to be a one-tarp guy, you know. <laughs> Slumming it. This is how normal people camp. Well, let's go over here to see some of the River Kings action. And Austin is uh, working his way to that highly desired River King hat, I think. Don't tell him, but he might just be there. Oh yeah. So we'll go over here to, um, Would you like to... yeah, the wandering electrician. On the episode of Kayaking Cribs. Kayaking Cribs. We go here to Kevin Champ and RKB, River King Brian. This is their garage, because every kayak camper needs a garage. That's right. This is the two boat garage. Yeah, standard. With, with the uh, home entertainment area in the center. Yep. And uh, take me through. Yeah, attached. We'll walk on through the garage here. Oh, well, oh. This is my bedroom over here. This is the parlor. Yeah. yeah. And then we got two bedrooms. So you're in the Superfly tonight. We're in the Superfly tonight. We're going to stay dry tonight. Very nice. And uh, Kevin is in uh, the Super Shelter looking sharp. That's what I'm talking about. And you'll have to show what it takes to make that. Oh, yes. And there's all <laughs> kinds of rigging going on. He's like boat pulls to this to that. There's not a lot of small trees, and we had to make it work. We got extra ridge. This is why you have a 40 foot ridge line, so you can get your 16 foot spacing coming off of this one through the can jam. And then the extra goes over there, and it's just all jalopy. But we got, we got his pullouts looking good. And then I'm with Dirt Dauber. The short crew is over here. Both of us are slightly vertically challenged. Yes. Yeah. So our lines are a little lower. The tarps are a little lower. <laughs> and uh, we'll start with uh, Dirt Dauber's tarp and set up. Always got his stuff together. Looking good in there. Got a new arrowhead quilt. Yeah. Looks, looks and good. as you know, Dirt Dauber uses a Scout Junior hammock. Yeah. Probably wish I didn't say that. But Yeah, I wish you would not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sporting the Southside 55. It works for me. Yeah, he's and it matches his dry suit yeah, it does. or damp suit. Yeah, it's almost good. a dry suit. So, anything you want to say to the boys at Southside? No. Nah, yeah. Thinking of you. Thinking of you. Yeah. Wet all day. We hear he is the ice cream king, and I know you're missing him because there's no ice cream in the freezer. <laughs> but um, and you can see our lines are everywhere too. I got extra ribs lines, and that way we can get the pullouts on the tarps everywhere. If you can see all this. So this is our two-boat garage. Look at there. That way you can unpack, pack, dress, cook, eat, hang out, out of the rain. Because it doesn't seem like Missouri has days without rain. And then I'm under the UGQ winter dream. Of course, I have extra ridge line and guy lines out here too. I'm getting a lot of requests for camp life. We pulled off the river at like three today which is pretty early for us, but it's how the miles worked out. The river's pumping. It's moving today with all the rain, and we made the miles fast and easy. That gives us plenty of time to throw up all this extra stuff. Otherwise, we would be totally bored having this much time before dark, but um, turned out to be a pretty nice little camp. That's camp life here, day three. It's about time for a fire and some dinner. What do you say, boys? Yeah. Fire. Dirt Dauber's a fire lover. Yeah, I'm ready for fire. <laughs> it's 
It's gonna be good. It might be a little bit of a challenge today, but I think we can make it happen. All right, so Austin and I are walking through this creek, which is another spring up there. We're gonna cross over here, get up on that ridge, and take a picture of Tarp City down here. Should be pretty cool. See the terrain. Man, you know what? It makes me wanna bring my stuff up here. This would be an awesome camp. I can't wait to see what it looks like out here on the end of this bluff. There she is, folks, the current river. I have to admit I'm a little bit jealous of this spot. Like, it's almost worth taking down a little bit and hiking it up, but not really. No. I've camped up here. I've camped on ridges before. And as well, the views are awesome and it feels cool. You gotta go down for water. You gotta it's, come up with gear, go down with gear. It's a pretty view. It's a pretty view, but we'll leave it at that. Someone else has camped here before. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's actually a trail. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it must be a spur trail from something back there. Oh, it looks legitimate, it's got a blaze. Oh, oh, uh, there uh, might be the uh, Ozark, Ozark trail. trail. Yeah. yeah. I gotta tell you folks, Current River is aptly named. It is just always, always has current. There hasn't been any flat water, no slack water. Not a ton of rapids, but it's always moving. It's always moving pretty good, pretty country. Wouldn't mind seeing it with a little sunshine. There's our camp, the host camp. This craggy little bluff here, got the river. Pretty sweet digs. We're just getting some photos. Pretty cool photo op. These springs are amazing. Like this is just a spring. All that's coming out of the ground just up river somewhere. Tell you, I wouldn't mind some dinner. It's about that time. You're doing good. Don't mind me and the camera here. Go real fast and then try to stop real quick. It's the secret. <laughs> There it is, right there. Yes, sir, look at him run. On it. Woo. We are here with the, the Tennessee crew camp. Look at this, very nice. Yes, we definitely got duped. They said, oh, take this over here, it's much better. So we did, and then we come over here and they got the high ground on us. Look, we're on to you, Brenda. <laughs> no, this is awesome. Good stuff. Very nice camp. <laughs> See the black leaves? Yep. That means it's growing. We should place a meter stick here. Austin is not feeling this moment. I just I have to say that. I am not okay right now. <laughs> 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 what? what? Oh, we didn't even notice y'all over there. It's like $4,000 worth of gear, but we're fine. <laughs> oh. Yay! They made it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't smoke, but I think I'm Give the man a one. cigarette. <laughs> Dirt Diver and I are living big under the garage here, about to make some dinner. You got to have a gear garage with a kitchen table. Especially in the rain. Thanks again, Matt Martinson, for the table. Making life worth living here. I did put a uh, sweatshirt on underneath my dry suit, but it's just so rainy. I won't take this off until it's time for bed. Dirt Dauber took a chance and, well now he's dodging the rain. <laughs> How you feeling, Austin? A little damp. A little damp. Got Kevin. How you feeling, brother? Drive it cold. It's been raining on this trip. Dirt Dauber in the corner there. Yeah, I'm good, I'm dry right now. And Brian. Dry and yeah. it's a little cool. It's a yeah. Little, little, there's a little something in the air. Yeah. I think it's called rain. All right, folks, can you see the water on this tarp? This is the new Kelty 16 that Brian has. 
and it is not working. My old Kelties, the 12 and the 16, I used for years, almost a decade, never leak like this. So I guess they're not coating them or the material's different. Something's going on, but this is garbage. Not acceptable. That's garbage. That's not a tarp. That's that's garbage. So we're going to scotch guard this stuff and see if we can get that thing watertight. But just throw that out there. I'd never had this experience before. It was a bit of a negative experience. But this is night. a negative experience right here, folks. Fortunately, we're just using it for our little uh, garage, so it's not as critical. But yeah. But that's what it looked like on my head last night. Just a heads up. He's down for the count. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Dirt dumber down. Dirt, dirt, dirt dumber down. down. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> It <laughs> <laughs> just down goes oh. dirt number. Oh, it's our feet here. <laughs> oh, you hate to see that. Oh. <laughs> a, a dirt dauber down in his prime. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my god. Lordy. We're not having any fun out here, oh, folks. God. He might have busted a gut. <laughs> Look at him. He almost, he almost busted a chair. Oh, the dirt dauber just went back oh. end over. Austin. Hey Austin. Hey buddy. Wake up, get on your dry suit, and pack this camp up. We got 30 minutes max. Alright folks, I know you can't see anything, but this was mostly dry. I've been watching it all night. It's coming on up. They uh way over there you may be able to see some lights working. They uh they almost lost two boats. There's just only so much rain a river can take and we're getting to that break point. I'm gonna pack everything up right now. It's about 2 a.m. Go ahead and get across this thing before it gets too much higher. Head on up, probably reset up a tarp up there and uh, wait out the night that way, see what this river does, but it's, it's coming up fast. The river is rising. The creeks are rising um, right here. This is all dry, turning into a swamp. Our nice little trickle, as you can see, is turning into a raging torrent. I don't know if you can see that, but she's flashing up a bit. So we're gonna pack this up and head to the high ground. But before we do that, I need to be sure these cats over here understand what's going on as well so make sure they're all right all right i think there's no way through it but to do it yep wading through the river yeah. got my boat and tow here get off this low ground and start getting up into high ground Woo, there's, a, there's a channel right here watch out watch out because that's going to smack your legs Make sure your relief zipper zip. Woohoo! All right. Getting the boats across. This is uh, this water's come up three feet and still rising pretty quickly. A little deeper in shit, buddy. <laughs> you went the wrong way, I guess. Or maybe it's rising fast. You good, Bry? We're on the mainland and we're looking good, but our crew is on the mainland on a little spit over there. They don't have as many options, unfortunately. They're gonna have to, uh, they can't go up their hill. So if the river, the big river flashes, which is actually my main concern, I really don't care about this one, this one's manageable. But if the current flashes, that's gonna be an incredible situation and they're gonna to need to retreat to high ground, which is just right there on that big face. They're basically gonna to have to scramble up the hill slowly 
and let the boats float up with them and you know tying the boats off the trees as they go this was the barely paddleable spring 50 solid yards of five six foot water it's all part of the fun logs and trees floating down brian loves rain and there's nothing more that brian loves than packing up camp in the rain at 2 a.m because we're flooding <laughs> Let's look. hey i'm gonna put it on your face you gotta see this face that's not the happy brian we all know and love <laughs> brian that's standing on dry ground with a life vest on yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right got my jet bull just heated some water up gonna make some uh smagicino we're under my tarp just waiting for daylight I'm not really sure at all how tomorrow's gonna play out yet yeah we're just kind of existing this is the adventure we were looking for this is the adventure we were looking for yeah all right so uh what we have here is a dead armadillo so this got to be some name of the camp the dead armadillo ditch what do you think so it's kind of dawn and we're um we got a road bed up here we're gonna walk up and survey the river dirt dauber and i just walked up there and uh it helps heat us up we've just kind of been squatting under the tarp it's a little chilly and if you can see the camp they're they're like on the last stand island right there they're, they're almost done ain't a whole lot of options but let's get up this hill a little bit further let me show you this river all right so we're on this ridge kind of walked up here from camp overlooking the river i don't know how well that's showing up we got trees in the river seeing if any of that'll pick up on gopro this early not big trees just like six to eight inch logs about 20 feet long when you start seeing the oak trees full size sycamores then you know it's going to be a really fun day we're just kind of evaluating our next move so i don't know we're, we'll probably have to wait and see what are you thinking austin i'm thinking it's a beautiful morning it is a beautiful morning it's not raining it's, rain. it's not Still raining rain how you feeling dirt dauber i'm good i'm good kevin always good how's my favorite rain man brian Got, got come up the hill, didn't you? If you're cold, start walking up a hill. Works every time. If we had been on a gravel bar this morning or last night, we'd have been in trouble because there are no gravel bars left anywhere. So we actually had a good spot. In hindsight, would have been better to get on up the hill where we are now. But um, but it all worked out. It's all part of the adventure. And Austin's got his game face on. I don't think I've ever seen the game face before, but there it is. <laughs> what, what do you say? It's a beautiful morning. Good time. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we're talking about. So uh, this is just a reminder that the river's in charge. So we're back at camp. We're going to talk to our the other half of our party over here who seem to be gearing up. So we'll, we'll see what they're thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking y'all better come on over. <laughs> yeah, I'd ferry across over. I would uh, like legit, not not in any kind of hurry, but ferry on over. So here's our humble abode this morning. Should have been camped here from the beginning, but we did have an escape and we had a plan we executed the plan. I really didn't think it would flash up that much, but it did. And uh, always have a plan. If we didn't have a way to get out, I wouldn't have stayed here. But getting up to this mainland high ground was easy. And um, here we are. Coming up fast and still coming in. It's not coming up from the main river. It's still coming in. The flow is going downstream. So this isn't flooding from the current. This is flooding from this tributary which is good and bad the main river is your biggest concern in a situation like this so if the main river was coming up into this channel that's indicative that things might get really rowdy which they still may 
but this is uh this is good times. Go, Brenda, go! No. All right, so everyone's made the ferry. The team is reconsolidated. How you feeling, Ashley? Doing great. He looks a lot better. He was a little wet yesterday. Man, I was, I was just wet and ready to get dry. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so we are here at camp. Uh, we've made a decision. We're going to let this bubble happen, and it's not, it's not a, it's not, it's not the right decision to get on the water, just to try to be in a hurry so we still have full-size trees now coming down we're gonna see if this bubble goes up and when it starts coming down it should come down you know two-thirds or so from where it flashed from and then taper so if that that if it stops now it'll be paddleable by lunch or so perhaps otherwise if by lunch it doesn't look good we're gonna just stay here another night and uh see what it looks like tomorrow so we are here with Austin. Austin isn't feeling the best. I'm at like a 80%. He's at 80. So that's like a hundred percent for normal people. So we're still normally good. With I, could still pad, I could still paddle 28 miles today if I real if I needed to. That's what I'm talking about. So some of the gang was really eager to get on the water and bust it out of here, but it's not the right decision. One option is extremely inconvenient. The other option is extremely dangerous, so um, we're just gonna we're just gonna make the right decision. We're gonna wait and see what this bubble does, and hopefully, hopefully this thing's gonna flash up and flash down. But I'm trying to get where you can see um, it's still coming up, and we have full size logs and debris coming down the river. And the fact of the matter is, I have no access to an online gauge. And I have no idea what this river's doing. So we're just doing it old school. We're sticks, putting sticks at the bank, gauging the rise. And when that crest happens and it comes back down, we'll start gauging that. And from there, make a, the best decision we can. It's all part of the fun. And like we, uh, like the boys and I were talking about, everybody wants an adventure until they have an adventure. So while I would not seek out doing a trip and then having it being flooded out, I wouldn't at this point have it any other way because this will be a memory none of us will forget. That day on the current river in Missouri, halfway across the country from home, we were stuck waiting on the mercy of the river to afford a safe passage again. There's been some full lawn trees coming down through here. And now this was all eddy before. This is a, uh, that's 50, no, that's probably about 80 feet of what used to be the natural bank. This morning it was eddied. Now it's full on in the trees. And that's what I'm talking about. If you had to swim to shore to safety, if you flipped, you're gonna swim into strainers and that stuff will light you up. Extremely dangerous situation. Uh, the river doesn't look better. We're staying the night here, albeit probably a little higher just in case it comes up some more. Because you never know what the river's going to do. So these sticks have been dropped in roughly eight minutes apart. So 16 minutes ago, it's come up about four inches. Brenda's laughing, but it's only on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, the water is still rising, folks. So um, we're just sitting here by the fire drying things out and uh, we're close to not having a fire. So we're moving the fire, get it up the hill a little bit. It is, um, it's still coming. Here's what we got though. As the water coming in is still coming in really fast up there, slowing and then somewhere right out in the middle, the flow stops completely, which is the level of the river and the backwater there. So what we're looking for is to find that point when all that water starts moving again, you know the river's dropping. She's pumping. We're having a little fun, so, so we'll Dobbin see what and happens. Here, and uh, we're, we've been monitoring the flow. Uh, we just want to be up with the rest of the crew. These guys are practicing to be YouTubers. Look, look. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone's there YouTubing. Was, there was water in the bank. Austin's YouTubing. Yeah. And then the Kevin's YouTubing. Then the water. Came water came up. Up. <laughs> You're looking good over there, man. Yeah. <laughs> What's you pointing at? The frog? Water. <laughs> I'll do it with you. Lots of water. Lots that of water. that direction. This is the water here. It's coming in. It's bad. <laughs> That's a lot of water, Jack. That's our camp. But anyways. We're having fun now, baby. We're not terribly far from having to move things again. I'm gonna go ahead and start making that happen here. A little further up the hill. There's the water. Coming on in. So we are, um, we're scouting a possible exfil location. We got a hardball that's not terribly far on the GPS and we got a dirt road or a four wheeler trail kind of thing up here that we scouted out this morning. So we are gonna go see if we can find a direct route to a hardball because who knows what this is gonna do over the next day or two. Tomorrow may be an X fill by vehicle. Watch that thorn. So, um, oh, she's coming up. The peninsula is being taken. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're gonna follow this road. It's gotta go to a hardball yeah. somewhere. And we're thinking this will be the route out, so. Yeah, all these feeders are still pumping. So the, uh, this road is getting a little more developed and bigger. Make no mistake, this will be a suck fest of a portage <laughs> with our loaded gear. Um, where it pays to have your your duffel bags in your boat so that you can offload all your gear into your duffels <laughs> and carry them separate. We're working plan B out. This actually might be plan C. And it may quickly turn to plan A depending on what, what happens here. Once you find one of those places where they run it three, four feet. That's why I'm walking slow. <laughs> Go that way as far as you can. Yeah, see there's the hard wall right there. Yes, okay. So right there, see that trail shooting to the left? Yeah. Let's go find that spur. Okay. There's a very good chance of Maybe. All right, we're on the Ozark Trail. We get too much further. There should be a spur to the left. This ain't slowing down at all. This is why you bring your life jacket. <laughs> see how we do. Oh, snap. In it now. Oh yeah. You gonna wait? So we're coming up on the spur trail to the left that should take us to the hardball. About 150 meters. And we'll see where we go from there. So are we hiking the Ozark Trail here along this ridge? It may be one or two miles to the hardball. We're just developing an emergency plan for getting out. That, um, it's always good to have options. But but I'm feeling the waffle tops inside the dry suit. <laughs> Starting to think, whew, maybe Oof we should was a bad choice. took off the dry suit and maybe put on some frog togs. But I'm not cold. So that is, if I can find it, that is the USGS graph of Jack's Fork uh, before the rainfall. It was running at about five, 600 CFS, whoops. And now it's at 5,000, still climbing like a rocket. And I don't see that coming back down anytime soon. So I believe this is our primary extraction now. We got two days to do it. The plan at this moment is there's undoubtedly gonna be a gate at the hardball road. So we're gonna need to find a ranger with access to that gate with a truck. They can drive down there and start shuttling our gear from that creek crossing to the hardball. And then uh, hopefully he'll be able to drive at least a couple of us to go get the trucks and trailers and the others can stay here while we do that. And uh, if we can do that tonight would be amazing. If he can get that truck back down to that river crossing, that's completely doable. And this is, this is good hard gravel. So any four wheel drive will have no problem in here. So that's our hope, that's our plan. We just need 
to get up here confirm that that's a possibility and get a hold of the rangers and uh we can at least we know right here call out so once we get our plan kind of buttoned up up here we'll call in the rangers and or volunteer firemen someone will have the key to this gate we're going to find them and we're going to ride on out because they i'm sure they want us off this river i'm sure the river's technically closed at this point after after all that this is just a fun adventure i really wouldn't change it thus far <laughs> i mean i'm not looking to do this every time don't get us wrong but this is fun too sometimes when the river isn't that adventurous sometimes the adventure finds you so we see the hardball you may be able to pick that up on gopro likely not but way up on the ridge you can see the hardball road we're less than half a mile from intersecting up here so we're getting there and uh after looking at the gauge and i think austin would agree i think this is the plan it's just, we just got to get off the river just uh, that, that river's not coming back down anytime soon so the juice is not worth the squeeze the juice is not worth the squeeze on this one folks <laughs> whoo this dry suit is is really working quite warm we are here on the road tons of traffic 2.3 miles that was 2.3 2.3 miles uphill a little bit of ridge walking that's a long way to tote boats and gear really long way there is no gate here so if we can get a four-wheel drive truck staged up here we can we can even run the stuff ourselves we can we can run that road all right so dirt dauber is calling the eminence vfd volunteer fire department and we're going to see if we can find someone with a truck uh, and line that up to come down here to that river crossing and shuttle gear and boats out for us to here and then we need a ride from this point we can camp here whatever we want to do but we'll need a ride to get our trucks and trailer to get back to here and then we're set so we could possibly make this happen today and with the weather currently i think i would probably want to do that more than wait so we'll see what happens ranger station okay austin so do you guys have uh, a bunch of equipment with you or yes sir we've got uh nine kayaks and then we were loaded for a five-day trip so we've got oh, kayaks and equipment. Oh, wow. Okay, so you've got all that equipment with you at the highway? No, sir. We uh, we hiked up about two miles from where we are on the river okay. to this spot. Okay. Okay, so we have Ranger Kent, I believe, is coming in a white, uh, oh, I'm sorry, in a pickup truck, which is great news. We're not actually prepared for the pickup truck yet. We're just kind of organizing the plan. What we want to have happen, like we talked about, is have give us a chance to get our gear set up and staged at the river crossing, and that's going to take considerable time. And then we, if we can get a pickup truck down to that crossing to ferry our gear up to this point, that's what we really need. And we can stage it up here. And then uh, we need to get rides to our vehicles um, to go get our own trailers, and then we're set. We got our, we got our pickup truck. This is the man we've been looking for. Woo! Park Ranger. That's my main man. So we're sorting out the plans coming together. We're sorting things out now. And uh, the sun is shining, so things can't be better. So I am here with the world's best ranger. This is Ranger Kent. And he's, uh, we left uh, Austin and Dirt Dauber up at the road to make contact with Anita. And we're coming down here to make contact with our camp and start getting everything buttoned up and hauling gear up to about where his truck is. And then we're gonna be able to shuttle boats and gear from there. All right, so we're almost back at camp. I see a campfire. Hey, I know you guys. All right, guys, I just gotta say, Kent is the man. But a special shout out for Timothy Breeze, world famous, son of the ranger that saved us. But uh, that's for you, man. Dad is famous. Dad is famous. Super famous. <laughs> Super famous. You guys saved yourselves today. Yeah, the right yeah, we, it's just it worked out. They they were already looking for us, and so they need to know where we are. So we we went up the hill, made the call, save everybody the trouble. Don't don't get, don't let your pride get in the way of being smart. Kind of deal. So. This is the way we like to find you. This save. is yeah. Smart, 
He'll be back to lunch in less than 30 minutes. That's that's the kind of day he's looking for. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Have a good Appreciate one. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Absolutely. Thank you. You're unloading boats. Yeah, into the duffels. Do you have duffels? Yeah, I got, a, I got my duffel with me. Why do we bring those? Huh? Why do we bring those? I don't know. Now man. you know. I don't know. <laughs> bring your duffel bags with you. Bing, bing. Yes. <laughs> Killing it. Having fun now, baby. Oh, yeah. Woo! We're just toting gear. It's the best. And so this is why River Kings always have the duffels in the kayak. Is it heavy? They look heavy. So we are bushwhacking again, River King style. Well, halfway there to being halfway there with half my gear. Yes. <laughs> Working for it today, boys. Yeah, man. Are you having fun, Brenda? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brenda show? is a trooper, folks. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. She can hang. Look at that fireman go. You can't stop Dirt Dauber. We'll say the boat drags a lot better empty. No complaints there. Fortunately, we got a lot of good mud for this portion. A little later, we're gonna have to uh, carry because it turns to rock. But for now, slogging in the mud. Whew. Go back and get my bags. I like to get not too far from everything on my portages. I go a little ways with one thing leapfrog go a little ways further keep doing it that way it's my method of choice always good to have a duffel bag and an a bag and uh, works out just about perfect every time back to the river crossing This is, uh, see, most camping trips, most kayak trips are kind of a, a uni-functional endeavor, a single sport, not here. Here <laughs> in Missouri, you get kayaking, you get long distance running through the woods. It's Iron Man, You baby. get Iron Man boat carry. I mean, this is going to be the Olympics, the boat carry. And look, backpacking. Get out the way. With duffels. <laughs> backpacking with duffels. Oh, yeah. Loving it. No swimmer bells yet. There's still time. Floater, there it is. She likes to float. Every time it floats, it makes me want to get in a river. Come on, Nana. Little water crossing. Tell you what, just another day on the Chunder, Chunder Kings. Right? Chunder Kings, Chunder baby! Kings. Woo. Don't need to, just go kayak and see. The good news is I can push you up. Yeah, and I can pull you. You push me and I'll pull you, Kevin. Just changed about 15 times. Yeah. What time is it anyway? Yeah, I was trying to make it. I could tell so you got look, quiet. Well, that looked further than. Yeah. Uh, I think it's harder than that. Look at him, hard as nails. Hard as nails. Look at him go. I'm just afraid to put it down. We'll be able to put it back on. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Uh. Well, we're going to have to have a second before. Look at that boat, 12 foot in the head. All the boats, all the gear, all the bodies are accounted for. Miles deep down on this uh, 
just forest road kind of deal. We've been loading, we got a few more to load. And then it's time to beat feet for a restaurant because I am a hungry individual. Almost there, folks. We're all on there. All our gear's in there, except for this bag. And a little bit down here. Woo! Skip our savior. I've been on a lot of shuttle rides, but this is the best one cheer, I've ever cheer. been on. World's best shuttle ride. World's, World's best cheer. shuttle Take driver. This one might actually be the world's best. <laughs> It's in competition with him and Simeon, I guess. Who's better, Chip? Oh, yeah, number one. That's my man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made Brian's day. We made it. Now for the vehicles. So it's 2.46. We're riding back towards uh, the landing, get our truck and trailers, follow the ship back out here, load everything up, and then we are looking for something to eat, I believe. In fact, maybe we should all stop and just eat. You know, the other guys will be fine, right? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's really a good idea. You know any place close? I mean, they're depending on us. We should be at our finest. I mean, you know the scary thing is? Yeah. <laughs> While we were waiting for you, they said that's exactly what you'd probably do if you came out. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yes, they oh, did. I love it. McDonald's time. All right. What time is it? I think it's like 4.15. No, it's burger time. <laughs> yes, well-earned burger. Good stuff. Good job, boys. So the, the boats are on the truck and it is time to start making tracks for the landing. I believe we're gonna stay there the night. World famous Chip, making it happen. Thanks brother. Back again. Yes, sir. And there goes the big bucket of fun. Watch your back, dirt dauber. Watch your back. There you go. Whew, that thing saved us a lot of work. There have been miles coming up through there. Like, not exaggerating, miles. That's where we came from, way over there. Just having too much fun on this one. Not the trip we were looking for on the ending there, but I don't think anybody would change it. We, that was fun. Would you change it? Nah, why? Wow. Looks like we had a couple extra fries. That burger? No words. No words. <laughs> Woo! Team Tennessee finalizing the strapping. Roger that. Woo! <laughs> Found it, Brenda. Way to beast. All right. Ozarks. Team River King. Winners. It tried to kick our butts, but uh, it's just the way it goes sometimes. And <laughs> not usually. <laughs> now it's time to look for a hot shower. So we're gonna right. actually, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we're not making it home, boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It kind of, it really stinks in this truck. It does. This, <laughs> I feel like I stink. I can't smell. I can smell. But I, I feel like I truck. smell like that dead armadillo. Back here at the landing, we're gonna take a walk down here, show the boys the river. That's what I'm talking about, folks. That's our river. That's the river. Pretty intense. It's a lot of water, folks. 308. Woo! The River King Suite. We need to see the boats get stolen. Man, that's that's not good. I just saw my outfit. <laughs> we are here at the Blue Heron, the restaurant here at the Landing in Van Buren, Missouri. Yeah, Kevin, yes. How are the wings? Well, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Now let's see. You. He's got the what is that called? Ribeye steak. The ribeye steak, steak sandwich, which is a ribeye steak. Basically, it's a full ribeye yeah, steak. Yeah, it's full ribeye steak. steak. This isn't going to be awkward at all. No. I promise. Not a first date fight, but here we go. 
How's your steak, brother? Look, great interviewer. Thank you. How's your steak? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're doing pretty good. <laughs> right on. How's yours? The fish. Good. You could come up here. Filet. Filet. Good. And John, the shrimp. Very good. There were so many good things to choose from. I didn't know what to choose, so I got in true the King fashion. The hamburger, and just for Tracy Alderson, egg cam, egg cam. <laughs> You want hold it? Okay, here we go. I got you. Oh, so crazy. I would like to visit you. Oh, that's the corner right there. Yeah. Now, you ready? Slow. Pull my plate in a little tight. It's going to be hurt later. She's like at the front. really good. That's a good hamburger. I need to figure out a way to put that in a mountain house bag. We are here with the world's best waitress. What's your name? Waiter. <laughs> we are here with the world's best waiter, Dylan. He is the man. Over here at the landing, he's taking care of us all night. Phenomenal etiquette and uh, doing good. A lot of effort, yeah. We, it's a pretty tough crowd, but uh, especially these guys down here. Yeah. What do y'all think, guys? He's the best? You are the best. Yeah, he's the best. For the record, you guys have a pretty good table. Oh, right on, right on. At the beginning? No. <laughs> After dinner, we said our goodbyes as we planned to leave out first thing in the morning. Brian, Brenda, Ashley, and John had laid out the red carpet for our crew, and we couldn't be more appreciative. We're thankful for the invitation to come join them on the current river, and I'm sure we'll be seeing them again in the future. We're blessed to know them and even luckier to get to paddle with them. And just like that, morning came and we hit the road on the way home. And there's the question, still unanswered. I can almost hear my granddaddy asking me now, what was it like? And while I would love a chance to sit and tell him about this one, when I think about it, he was right there the whole time. Oh.